I'm Trisha Clements with Your Biz Watchdog, and I am so excited to be speaking at Ward Camp Atlanta, uh, the first time since 2019. Um, I love Ward Camp, and it's I'm so so glad to be back in Atlanta. It's finally back, and thank you all for coming to this the last session of the weekend. Uh, thank you all so much for sticking out and and showing up here for me. Um, a little bit about me. So my business is Your Biz Watchdog. Uh, I am the co-organizer of the Atlanta SEO for Local Businesses Meetup. Uh, I'm an expert contributor for White Sparks 2023 Local Search Ranking Factors. I'm also GoWP Agency Owners Facebook Group, L uh, local SEO expert, work with Google Business Profile Management, White Label Services, also do Google Business Profile Fix-It Services. GBP, Google Business Profile, I might interact and say the same thing. That's all the same exact thing. Uh, GA4 installation, because with my clients, when you're doing local SEO, any type of marketing, you want to be able to measure what you're doing. And um, I had someone recently that I talked to, and they said, we've talked to several people about local SEO. And I said, well, one of the things is I require we, that we have GA4 installed so that we can track what we're doing. And I got that, I said, you always have to measure what you're doing, otherwise, how do you know what's happening with your money? Thank you, David Zimmerman, if you are, we're in his GA4 presentation. I lived in Atlanta for 27 years, and I now live in Southwest Florida with my rescue dog, Moxie. There is a picture of her so you can see how cute she is. <laughs> um, you all can go ahead and, um, here's a link to my slide deck, links and a PDF guide. There's a QR code. You feel free to take pictures, but you don't have to if you want to go ahead and um, download those now, later, whenever. But you will have um, access to all of that. Um, so you don't have to rush taking pictures if I go past something too fast for you. Okay, so Google Business Profiles. We were looking up um, last week a Mexican restaurant in Marietta, Georgia. This is what comes up. These are their Google business profiles. Um, and hopefully everyone is familiar, everyone's familiar with what your Google business profile is. Okay, everybody got that? Uh, here it is here on uh, your mobile phone when we specifically selected a restaurant and it's got all the information, reviews, and everything on there. Okay, well, whoops, I went back the wrong way. So, but for everyone who just came in, um, if you, um, you can take pictures as all you want, but you can get my slide deck, links, and my PDF guide at the link and the QR code as well. I'll have that again at the end if, in case you miss it. Okay, so Google Business Profile, it's integral to the success of your local SEO strategy. So you really need to make sure that you've got your Google business profile and you're actively managing it. Use your Google business profile to drive traffic to your website and increase conversions. The one thing that, that a lot of small businesses have a hard time with is not understanding the guidelines. You've got to stay compliant with Google's guidelines. If, if you're not, you risk suspension. So it's really important if you're not compliant and you get your profile suspended, the phone's going to stop ringing. Uh, you're stop gonna, you're going to stop getting leads and conversions from that profile, which means income is going to decrease. We do not want that. So um, make sure that you are staying compliant with your Google business profile. And we're going to go over some of the things to help with that. Okay. July. This July 30th, 2023, Google reorganized their guidelines for Google Business Profiles. And they reorganized it. They really kind of clarified a few things. There aren't a whole lot of new, new things, um, but, and, but they really just kind of restated a few things. Um, and one thing is Google still has gray areas in their guidelines. And it's really set up like that. A lot of people say, well, why doesn't Google just say what they, what they want from me? The reason is because their businesses, you'll see there, there's spam on the map. They should not be out there on the map. And once they get suspended, Google doesn't want to tell them this is what we need because then they could possibly go out and, and fake it and, and get past Google. So Google's not going to come out and say, this is exactly what we need from you. 
that is why there are gray areas in the Google Business Profile um, guidelines. So, the top two takeaways from the reorganized guidelines. Your GBP is, it a, is a use it or lose it, and you need to audit your users. Oops. Use it or lose it. So basically, Google's saying if you do not access your Google business profile for long periods of time, you could have your access revoked and content removed after adequate warning. So you could get emails, but is that going into your spam? So um, you really should be keeping up and uh, monitoring your Google business profile and logging in frequently because that's going to help you increase your conversions, your customers. But if you, you're there, especially if you're an agency and you told your client, we've set your Google business profile up, it's there. They can't just, just leave it there. And as far as long period of time, what's that? Well, they, they don't state it, but it is probably a close to what they're saying with Gmail. They tell people if you have a free Gmail account, if you haven't accessed it in two years, it could be deleted. So I would say that that is probably what they're referring to. However, I would tell you to make sure that you're going in and that you are accessing your Google business profile and keeping the information up to date. Auditing your users. So this is something that Google recently put in black and white when they reorganized their guidelines. But it's something a lot of us um, in the local SEO um, area have known for years, and I've been telling my clients this for years, now Google is putting it in black and white. So if you have a user on your Google business profile and they are using that same email account in other Google platforms, let's say YouTube, Google Ads, they're going onto the Google map and editing things with that email address. If Google doesn't like what they're doing on those other platforms, let's say you've got an ad running and, and Google flags the ad, says you are against their guidelines on their ad, that could trigger a suspension in your Google business profile. The hard part about that is, when you get a suspended Google business profile, you're like, what did I do wrong with my Google business profile? You're not thinking about your Google ad or your YouTube. And that's why it can be difficult for businesses to not know, well, well what's wrong, how do we fix this? Um, actually, when they just came out, like I said, July 30th with these reorganized guidelines, and I'd been telling clients before that, that that this was an issue. Google, of course, had, didn't have it in writing until then. I actually had a suspension I was working on just before they clarified this and put it in writing that had an issue with an email address. That was how I got it reinstated. And so I knew that this was happening. Now, in black and white, Google is saying, yes, make sure you are not using that email that you've got in your Google business profile on, on these other Google platforms. Um, and, and it's not just your owner, any user. Audit your, all of your users. If you've got somebody who used to be, uh, used to work with your business, an employee, some type of marketing firm, you're no longer working with, remove that as a user, remove that. And this is, this is just how Google puts it. It's a little bit of Google speak, not very clear. Um, but basically the same thing um, as far as you could get it suspended because of things you're doing with other Google products. Okay. Um, like I said, it's not new. It's the first time that they put it in writing. So you need to check all of your users on the account. So don't use the same email account in your Google business profile as you're using on other Google products. So those were two of the main takeaways I got from the reorganized guidelines. I want to run through just a couple of other issues because I do a lot of reinstatements for clients with their Google business profile, and I want to highlight a couple of things from that just to, to help know what um, when people, when your clients or when you have an issue with a profile, what you might look at as far as what could be an issue. Eligibility is a big one. A business has to make in-person contact with customers during its stated hours. That's a big one as far as, is the business eligible? The address. This is the biggest area when I'm working on a reinstatement that I see clients have issues with. What address did you get your Google business profile verified at? If you're using a virtual office, 
which is just a mailing address, uh, that location is not eligible. That doesn't mean your business isn't. It means you cannot use that location as your verified address. Also, co-working spaces. I really don't recommend, there are um, several ways that you can use a co-working space. Um, I don't recommend it, especially, so for example, um, different Regis um, offices. Google will go through, they will suspend every single listing with that um, as an address in a Google business profile. And I'm not talking about a brick and mortar where it's showing. Even if you set it up as what's called a service area business and you've hidden the address, that address is hidden in the background, but Google knows what you put in. Yes. Oh, that's it. Can you have a, your listing not show your address? Correct. So that is what's called a service area business. And so, for example, take um, me. I work from home, and so I have to have a verified address. So I verify at my home, but then I tell Google there's a box to check to say, you know, I do not see customers in my address. So it hides it from the public, but Google knows what address you're using. So with that address, you cannot have a, a Regis office. You cannot have a UPS store. It needs to be whatever that is. Your, if it, you're using your home address as your business address, that's what it needs to be. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I want to stop yes. you. Yes. So we, we work out of the space. Mm -hmm. Profile show that. So there are a couple of ways that it's okay. So, um, and um, since you asked, I'll go ahead and, and go through a little bit. That's okay. You have to main, maintain clear signage. They need, in other places they say this, they don't say it here, but what that means is clear permanent signage. So um, you can't have a location, a co-working space where you just come in and rent a desk here and there. That's not allowed. You have, there are co-working spaces where you can rent a specific office and you can put your plaque on the permanent plaque on the door and have your employees come in during office hours and you have a phone that you answer there. Those are things that, that are allowed. You might want to talk after to just make sure your specific um, thing as far as if, if it's allowed. Um, I'll tell you, if it's a large co-working space, um, you may have trouble maintaining and keeping that address. Um, but if you're actually using it, you, if there are any issues, you'd be able to go in and prove to Google that you're using that, that is your frontage and you've got your permanent signage. So, and one thing, if you're working with Google and you have issues and you have to send them information on your permanent signage, do not um, do a, a, an image and um, fix it. Um, Google will know, and you will probably never get your profile back, and you probably will never be able to use that email address again. You will get blacklisted. Um, so do not try anything like that. You, that's, a, that's a big no-no. So um, if anybody, because some people, well, I'll just send them this. No. Google, they, they have it for reasons. They, they, they want to make sure um, where your office is. Posting restrictions. So you can post on your Google business profile. Um, and here's where, uh, basically Google wants to make sure it's, um, if it is unhelpful, harmful, off topic, or generally violates, um, Google policies, they could suspend your ability to add posts to your profile. One thing that don't, people, um, a lot of times don't understand is that including your phone number or a link in the text of your post is not allowed and could be, um, can violate their policies and they could, um, pause your ability to post. What they have is there is a, a CTA in there with a button where you put it in and that's where you would put the link. Um, so don't put it in the text. It may not cause problems, but it could cause problems. Okay, so um, I just tell people as a general course, just don't do it because you don't want to run into issues. Third-party ownership, this is a good one um, that I like to point out. This is what I've always done for clients, but um, sometimes um, others, I, I run into clients that say, oh, I'm not sure who this owner is on the account. The business owner should be the owner on the account. You would sign, if you're, if you're managing it for someone else and you're not the business owner, you should be a manager on the account. The business owner should be the owner. Really important. This one I thought I 
I put this in here because I thought it was kind of interesting that Google puts this in writing here now with their reorganized guidelines. Guarantees by marketing companies. Do not have false, misleading, or unrealistic claims. Uh, that includes guarantees of top placement on Google. Uh, I thought that's kind of funny because, you know, I tell my clients, you know, we, we can't um, guarantee anything. You know, we can tell only, you know, this is how it works and this is, this is what we're doing, but we can't guarantee anything. This is Google saying, you know, don't believe somebody who guarantees it. I just thought that was interesting. Something that is really, uh, relatively new, social media links on your Google business profile. The way it used to work in the past, you would have schema markup added to your website and you would put your, um, your social media in there, your links in there. And you would hope that Google would pick them up. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. Now you're able to go into your profile and update, the, update those and put your profiles directly into your Google business profile. This is one of the things where I tell um, clients that Google's always changing features, adding things. It's important to keep up to date with what's going on. It's not something that you can just go into, set it up, and you're done because there are things always changing um, in Google business profiles. Okay. So. The, that was um, what I originally planned on talking about was all of the reorganized guidelines. And then just recently, after I was preparing my talk, Google's coming out with a new reinstatement process, which is being rolled out. So it's really important for businesses to understand and know what's going on. So I really wanted to talk about this and focus on it some more. So the, re the one question people have is, why? Why are they, so the, the reinstatement process, so if you get your profile is suspended, Google says you're suspended from the map, they may completely take your profile off the live map, or they just may suspend it, which causes a soft suspension where anything you change in your profile is not changed live on the map. So you need to get reinstated so that your business in, is back in good standing with Google. So why are they doing this new reinstatement pr process and being rolled out? The reason is because you've all heard in the EU, there are all these lawsuits in Google and transparency. That's the why. This is already rolled out in the EU. It is coming here when we don't know. And it's really important to know that if you get reinstated, the main thing, or if you get suspended, the main thing you want to focus on is getting reinstated quickly. Uh, so that's a key. Um, as far as making sure that you are getting your business reinstated and you know what, um, what Google wants to see. So, going forward, it's going to be harder for businesses to get reinstated because of this uh, new process that's rolling out. Businesses that get suspended, there could be false positives. Google could just go in there and see something updated and just decide, oh, we're going to suspend it and do a quality check. Provide us your information and prove you, you are who you say you are and you're eligible for a profile, bam, good. And some businesses, because it's so personal that this is where you get a lot of your business from, it can be when businesses get that, it, it's very personal and they get um, very distraught over it. And how do I get this back? I need to hurry up and get this back. And sometimes it's, it's nothing that they did wrong. Uh, sometimes it could be a bug. A glitch, a glitch in the system, a glitch in the matrix. Um, Google doing a quality check. Sometimes if you update certain things in your profile, it, it has a higher chance of getting suspended. You've got five core pieces to your Google business profile. Your name, your address, your primary category, your website, and your phone number. Changing any of those things, you have a higher chance of suspension. Not you're going to be suspended, you simply have a higher chance. The reason is because Google has said, you've told us this is what, who you are and what you do. These five main things, name, address, primary category, website, phone number, this is who you are. If you've changed one of them, Google's, hold on. Who are you again? That's why you're, you're, you may get a suspension during that. Um, and they're, they're just checking to make sure, even though if you had, uh, I have, um, if you're doing a um, rebranding, I rebranded back in 2020, 2019, rebranded. 
I had to go through and, and, and do some changes. And I was like, I need to make sure I was going to be ready in case there was a sus suspension because I knew that those things could trigger it. Um, one thing about suspensions is some businesses could be going along 10, 15 years. And I've never had a problem with my Google business profile. All of a sudden, I'm suspended. I don't understand why now. I haven't done anything. And sometimes Google just picks up on the fact that you were violating guidelines because of some reason or another. Maybe your address wasn't right. And you just simply, this was the time when Google picked up on it. You need to fix that in order to get reinstated. That's one of the, um, the hardest things when working with businesses that I know the guidelines because I work with them all day, every day. Businesses take one quick look and then move on and Google updates and changes things. So when they get um, suspended, it's really hard to, for them to, to look at and see, well, I don't understand, nothing's wrong with my profile. Well, what address did you verify at? Do we need to get that updated? So this whole new process that's rolling out, it's in the EU, it's coming to the US, we need to be prepared. It's evolving. What it is, what they, we think it's going to be now, it'll probably not be look exactly like we think it will. I'm hoping that they do some changes. Some of the things that um, is diff are um, one thing that's different is this new process. When you ask for a reinstatement, it's going to be a one and done. You ask for it, and that's your one opportunity. Currently, if you ask for a reinstatement, you can uh, if if they say no. You can email back and forth with support. This new process, you are not going to be able to do that. That's huge. Um, it, it has me concerned for businesses. That's why I want to make sure that businesses are aware of what's coming down um, because of that. There's, there, that's not there. What it's going to look like when it actually gets here, I hope that they implement something. What it's going to look like, we don't know. When, if you receive an email saying your profile has been suspended after this process is in place, there is a certain point when you click on there, it's going to say in tiny, tiny print now, um, upload your supporting information and you have 60 minutes. Once you click this button, if you are on that page and you click that button and it starts to upload your documents, if you do not have your documents in order, and upload them within 60 minutes, what you have uploaded is what Google considers, nothing else. That's, that's big, I, because I've seen people that, and, and I know I've done it before, you go to a website and you're like, oh, what's this? Click, 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 and then it's like you five minutes, you know, so five screens ahead, and it's like, you shouldn't have clicked that, you've started a 60 minute timer. Well, when did that start? I don't know, right now Google doesn't show you. You have to know when you hit that button. Um, so it's, this is why I want to, I don't want to, I hate being like alarmist, but on this, it's like, whenever this process, which I'm, we thought it was going to happen a month ago, but I, I'm not sure it's coming when it gets here, please make sure that you, your clients know if there's a suspension, please don't cl just click through and know what you're doing. Really important. If you don't, have your documentation in order, you've clicked that button, and the 60 minute goes through, and you haven't uploaded anything, Google's going to say, well, there's nothing, they're suspended, and you have no way right now to go back through an appeal process. Huge for your Google business profile. Be prepared, be proactive, and be prepared, okay? Be prepared. This is what it's going to look like if you're not prepared, okay? Um, I was talking to a client recently, they were rebranding their business. So this reinstatement process hasn't um, come up yet, hasn't been implemented fully, and, but I told him he was rebranding and I said, you have a high likelihood of getting suspended. Before we touch anything, I'm going to get your documentation in order, look through it, make sure it's correct before we touch anything. Because I want to make sure that if there's a suspension, we can handle it properly. And I could see the terror on his face. He had been through a suspension and did not know, he, he did not know what Google was needing and asking him. He said it was one of the worst experiences ever. Like, 
I've been through suspensions. I'm here to help you. And that's why I was like, that's why we're not simply going in and changing things. We're going to get your information together so that you're prepared and you know what Google wants. Whoops. Okay. So your supporting documentation, you need to get it in order. It needs to be correct. What does correct mean? Your name and your address that are on your Google business profile, even if you're a service area business and it is hidden, it needs to match documentation that you're gonna to provide to Google, okay? Um, if you do not specifically know what you're looking for and looking at, have somebody who's done this review it, make sure that it's right and you know that that's what Google wants. I recommend that businesses go through this now, get this documentation that I'm gonna talk about um, together and review it once a year. That should be on your to-do list for your business, if your agency for your clients to do. Um, so, some of the things, like I said, your name and address need to match what's on Google and what's on certain documentation that you're gonna provide to Google. So you've got your secretary of state, um, whether it is the, your, your corporation documents, your LLC, DBA, any of those documentations, business license, if you have a business license in that specific city, county, area, uh, your insurance, utility bill. A lot of businesses are like, oh yeah, I've got my cell phone or my um, internet bill, but it's in my personal name and not my business. You can't send that to Google, That's, that does not apply, they don't want that. Uh, a bank statement, um, something, uh, something like that. Pictures of your permanent signage, how we were talking about earlier. Pictures of permanent signage, they're gonna want all of that. Again, your name and address have got to match. Even service area business, whatever address you put in there, that's what Google wants to see on your documentation. Yes? Just FYI, I ran through this on the photos recently with them, mm -hmm. and luckily I had a pretty decent guy going back and forth. Yes, and what he told me is we have to submit a picture of the building facing on Plus, if there was a signage outside that said the name the of the name. business, mm -hmm. plus we, they, he, the client had to walk into the street showing the street signage at the yeah. corner with a picture of the building if we could get it through the trees. Yes. And we had to submit all of those to prove mm -hmm. that he was in that building. Yes. You can only do it within a certain time frame. Well, she's talking about images. There are videos that he's talking about as a video verification. Um, and that, those work as, as well, the video verifications or um, having photos. Yes. You, when you're doing that verification, that way that you're talking about video, you cannot pause that video either. It's gotta be a, one continuous video. So it has to be live with the person. Sometimes, yes, and it depends on what part of the process you get into. Sometimes you can, I know, it depends. Um, but yeah, sometimes you got to do it live with them. Sometimes you can do it and submit it. Also, um, if you're doing a video, have your key show you in the video, unlocking your door, proving that you have access to that. Listen, yes. I'm confused. It, yeah. it sounds like this process excludes virtual businesses. So when you say virtual businesses, are you, you talking about online only? Online only. Online only. No so, okay. So. There's, there's a little bit, let me clarify. So um, you are ineligible for a Google business profile if you only have online and you do not have the opportunity to visit customers in person. So for example, I work out of my home, but I will, can go to my customers and meet them. Uh, also think of like your lawn care company. They may not have an office, but they, will, they, can, they come to you and, and cut your grass or do whatever. Your, your intent is to ser service customers nation and so 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 the this is for local SEO so even if what not, possibly possibly not so for example I can um, service businesses across the US but the reason I have a Google business profile is because I also can service clients locally so it's fine if you have that glo that global presence but you have to say, I service people in this area where I, my business is. Okay, so, so that it serv service people and can visit them in person yeah. in that area. That, 
So that means you're a service area business where you're hiding your address. So when we were talking about the photos, that would be for a brick and mortar. So, um, and, and sometimes it can be tricky um, as far as determining, is this really eligible for a profile? If you, you visit people, it, well, at the very beginning, at the very beginning, I was talking about for local SEO strategy, it is a huge driver of conversions, traffic, money. Um, when I was talking here about the Secretary of State, the, one of the reasons you want to make sure you have all of this documentation together ahead of time in advance is because I, I talked to one client and I went to look them up on the Secretary of State. They had not paid their yearly dues and they were dissolved and had to get, re, get reinstated with the Secretary of State before they could let Google know. And how long is that? Well, every state's different. Is it a week? Is it two weeks? I went, it was a month getting information. So that's why you need to have it together. It needs to be correct, and you need to revisit it once a year. So, yes. I have some clients that I've worked with before that are already established. They have, they've never claimed their business listing. It's one of the auto-generated ones. Yes. And when it has website, it has that lovely Google business site that's yes. an automated one. And we're able to get a change to their actual site, but I'm always concerned that that's lingering out there. Is there any way to get so, it deleted? No, and I recommend you keep it. You're talking about the business site. So there's inside your Google business profile account, there is um, set up a, 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 a Google site. And it's, you can change the URL. I don't like doing that. It's like you can put like your business name dot business dot, yeah, yeah. dot business dot site. That's what it is. The reason I recommend doing that is it pulls the items in from your Google business profile, your reviews, things like that. You're not going to give that link out to anybody, but Google sees it. When you do a brand search, I've seen so many times that come up in the search. So people are finding it in search. Therefore, it's kind of important just to keep it. So I recommend keeping that, but do not make it your primary URL on your Google business profile. Correct. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So losing your Google business profile can really be devastating to a business. It can be the main driver of leads and income for so many local businesses, small businesses. The phone stop ringing, new business dries up. Be prepared, be proactive, be prepared. And then you'll, we hope nothing happens. In the event that it does, you will be prepared. Okay, here are my slides and information. Questions, um, and I've got all my information here. So. Any questions about this and, and all your Google business profile stuff? Like I said, I work, I do a lot of work with suspensions, reinstatements, and um, it can be something if you don't work with them often, that can be frustrating. Let me see you had your hand first, yes. You talked about rebranding. What if you've got a business, it's got a website, but the domain name is not your business name, and you want to open a new business that's not the same business, it's another business, so, it, you know, another website. So, Google does want, if you rebrand, they want generally what you're doing in your business to be the same, similar. Like if you're sitting here and you're, you've set up a house painting company and you're going to rebrand and, and then all of a sudden you're going to be a lawn care company, that's not rebranding, that's a different business. Right. So, so they need to be... A new URL, a new website, it may not be in a new location. Is it the same type of business? Are you doing the same type of work? If it's pretty similar, you could do a rebranding. If you've got, because I did when I did mine, I was um, I I had a new name, a new website, new name and website, and I was able to rebrand. Well, what stays the same? Just your your personal name and the, and the address, phone number, location, things like that stayed the same. Okay. The main thing Google wants to know is, are you doing the same type of thing, or are you were you under the same LLC? Yes. Or? I, on that, I think I did a, a name change, but it's the same LLC as far as George is concerned, yeah. So, Rhonda. I want to talk a little bit about, I'm seeing a lot of this with businesses, you know, two businesses with the same, ad, same address yes. with different phone numbers. Yes. And then Google rejects one of them. Yeah. Um, with it, it can be difficult um, having, the main thing is having a different category. 
So um, a lot of businesses, so for example, let's take real estate agents. A lot of times you'll have a lot of real estate agents under the same address. They may have a, a different phone number or the same number. I always tell those clients that Google will look at that address and if you're the same primary category real estate agent, Google's gonna pick one person and you're gonna show up in the maps. If you're not that one person, you need to change and have your home address, your address, and hide it. Otherwise, you, you're, you're gonna be hidden. Google's gonna filter you in the search. Is that, it's probably not related, but probably not fully what Rhonda was talking about. Um, if you've got several businesses at the same location, it, it can be, Google sometimes wants to merge them or doesn't want to have both of them live. Um, so it, it's really tricky as far as maintaining, making sure that they're separate, having, making sure they have different names, different pri primary categories. If you've got the same primary category, there's a high chance Google's going to merge the two. Um, so you want to have separate primary categories. You want to have different websites, different names to, um, to make sure that you don't either get suspended or Google merges. Yes. So why? I, I have two uh, Google listings for, this, for, for myself and for my business. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to move to a pretty much a really residential area where the businesses are on the other side of the island. Mm -hmm. And I want to be listed for that island, and, but I don't want to, of course, uh, run into problems with being suspended. So, um, if you're, you're actually moving physically on the other side of where they are, unless you're going to have a, a, an actual address location there, I recommend that you move that location um, to where you're moving to. And you, it, it, anytime you do that, there is a higher chance of suspension. Not that it's going to happen. You could be perfectly fine. But before you do that, get your, your documents in order. Be prepared. Um, so, but one thing I will tell you is, um, especially this is for, again, the, your business on um, Google business profile on the map, your ranking, where you show up there and who you show up for in searches is going to depend where they are in relation to you. So if you're on one side of the island and they're over here, chances are you're not going to come up as often in these searches. So if there's a way for you to have an office over there, I would work on that. But a lot of times it's not, it's not a, you're not able to. I understand that. Yes. Uh, officially, my business is a service area business. I teach CPR mm -hmm. at five specific places every single month. Yes. I have for 11 years. Yes. And three of those are verified addresses. Yes. Two of them are not. And now I can't verify the two that are not. Exactly. And officially, I'm not so, supposed to be using them three. Correct. Years, yes. But I yes, and I'm sorry, I, I'm supposed to be uh, projecting the, the questions out, but let me um, repeat a little bit. So he, you do um, to teach CPR and you have classes at five different locations every month, but you do not own or lease those locations on a rent them. Okay, Google says you are not allowed to have profiles at those five locations. You have your one profile, you have a service area business wherever you are at your area, and you can add posts, you can add events in your profile to show this is what you're doing every month. I, you, I, you're saying that you can't get two or three of them. Um, two are not verified. Two are not verified. I was, yeah, the ones that are not verified, the other ones, that's tricky because even though they are live on the map, this is a situation where you just haven't been caught you're not in compliance with Google guidelines. You're one that you weren't trying to trick Google. You thought this is, your, this, this is what you're supposed to be doing. They used to say, if you receive a postcard, it's just Well, and so, but see, here's the, here's the thing about the postcard. The postcard, though, is, is something to send out. You're sp still supposed to be compliant with guidelines, but they're so long in such gray area, you're not going to read all of them. So, ago, yes. Yeah. So having said that, it, it is not compliant. Um, and it's something you may want to work on on merging them because I'm assuming they probably all have reviews, getting them merged in and making it a service area business. I will tell you that making something, going from brick and mortar to service area can be challenging because you're changing the whole nature of your business. 
and we are almost out of time. We got three minutes. Yes, Bill. So in this scenario, so he's got five locations. Um, we know that proximity is the number one, yes. you know, factor in getting that, you know, appear in the map. If he were to produce good, relevant content on his Google Business profile in location number five, um, does he have a chance of then? appearing in that search even though his physical location is over here and he's got the whole service area so can you optimize and work that for that location profile? yes that profile yes um and and then another thing i'm gonna say with with everything it depends um so so one thing i would look at is is the area what does that look like as far as as what you do in your business what's the competition look like um and based on that, then you can optimize your profile and, and specifically target that. Also optimize your website. We're talking about Google Business Profile, but your profile and your website work hand in hand. Um, I, while I have seen profiles without a website do well, these are ones that, that, that typically they um, don't have a lot of competition. So um, definitely don't ignore your website. So, okay. Let's see, I haven't had you, you haven't, go ahead. Okay. Um, you talked about the empathy capacity of agency. An agency account, instead of just a regular using your email, agency accounts, um, basically it is um, with Google, if you're operating an agency, I recommend you sign up for an agency. When you have people add you, they don't add your email, they add your agency account. Um, it's just easier to keep things organized and I, I like it better, however, this is either way that you do it. Um, I'm not sure that I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about your users and checking them and you can get your account suspended. If you're using an email account and you have an agency profile or any account that has a ton of profiles listed on, with that user, if you do something on your, on your Google Ads account Google doesn't like, and you're an agency, it, you could get every single profile that you have an, um, used, that you're a user on suspended. Okay, so that's another reason that these users are important to audit your users. Um, you want to make sure you're not using it on these other profiles. But agency account, I do recommend it if you're doing a lot of profiles. So, yes. Um, I have a client that says he has 30 different franchises and he wants a listing for each one who does have addresses. I think what he's doing is his manager, which is kind of a part-time guy, mm -hmm. um, has his apartment or house or whatever, um, and they use that address. Yes, that is not recommended in Google guidelines. Um, you should not use an employee's address because you do not have um, full access to that. It's, it's his office for that location. It is is the business paying rent for that office? It's, it's not brick and mortar, it's a service area. Okay. Yeah, but the, exactly. So, but he doesn't, that business doesn't have control over that address. So like for me, I'm using my home address. I, I that's that's where I live, that's where I, I own. Or if you have a, ha, li, um, your house and you, you lease, you rent your house, but that's your house. He is not living in all those locations personally. His employees are. Google does not like that. But we can talk further. I'm, I know we're get, we're at the end of it. If you want, we can talk further a little, about a little bit more about that. So, okay. Thank you all so much. Definitely reach out. I'll be here for a bit longer if you have questions. Want to talk further? Thank you so much.